This is one of the coolest plants that exists. This is the resurrection plant. Let me show you what it does. Ever heard about the false rose of Jericho or the resurrection plant or even the dinosaur plant? Well, let me introduce you Selaginella lepidophilia, the resurrection plant. Usually you expect ferns to grow in wet and moist places such as forests or riverbanks, but not our resurrection plant, it grows in the desert. Look, it's native from the Chihuahuan desert, uh, you can see it here. It's between the States and Mexico, let me zoom in. Up. But actually now it's kind of spread in the whole South America, especially in the central mountains of, of Mexico. But yeah, it does come from the desert. Then the next question is, how come? Well, this plant has almost superpowers. It can dry up and survive years with only 3% of its mass. And when it eventually rains again, or some water is available, it, reduces, it literally comes back to life. Let me show you. So as I'm shooting this video, I'm gonna rehydrate this plant. I got this one from Mexico City back in 2015. So it's actually uh, five years old. I'm gonna put this little GoPro next to it during the whole process. All right. So I'm gonna put it in the water like this. Put the GoPro here. And, and then we wait. Okay, meanwhile, let me tell you uh, some really interesting stuff about this plant. As you can imagine, with some uh, proprieties as such as, you know, resurrecting and stuff like that, people, I mean, uh, people's minds run uh, wild. Let me show you some stuff. Oh yeah, and don't forget to subscribe or hit the bell, please. All right, let me show you something that I found uh, online. So this lady is a witch, or supposedly a witch, apparently, and she has like a YouTube channel full of magical stuff. So she explained quite well what you're supposed to do with the plant, you know, to exploit its uh, amazing powers. So let's have a look. Mr. Draw in Prosperity, um, I will take that money and I will place so, yeah, it in my basically gonna America. Flower. put money inside in the hydrated open and plant for every situation but you, this is just an idea for you to use so, so she, she drops to the coins coins you normally do i like to do odd numbers so i'll have anywhere from three odd numbers to you know 13 coins uh -huh. Well, at some point she mentions you have to post, put it on your altar. So you need to own an altar, first of all. Uh, well, that's one thing. Let me show you the other crazy stuff that comes around this plant. All right, so that's um, a website uh, in Spanish. So I'm going to translate on the way. So yeah, basically you you get your, uh, your, your spike moss like, just like that, uh, dry and stuff. So you can see there is still green parts here. Um, so yeah, stones and stuff, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so basically they say that this flower can bring, uh, you need to make like some prayers, uh, oration, some prayers to bring uh, luck. Uh, and so you can uh, ask for good health, uh, you can ask for love, uh, you can ask for money, and uh, you can even ask for job. So that's quite good in this economy, you know? So you should get your own uh, uh, plant, actually. Uh, I'm gonna put a link because you can actually buy it uh, like in Amazon or uh, in other website. Uh, sometimes it's sold as uh, dinosaur plants. Okay, now I'm gonna show you something that uh, is quite important. So there is some uh, legend around the Rose of Jericho, the Selaginella. Uh, that said that, um, well, this plant, so, you know, the, f the, the plant from the Chihuahuan desert, well, uh, was apparently uh, uh, around Jesus uh, 2,000 years ago. So, um, there is something that doesn't quite add up, right? I mean, they mention, uh, not necessarily in this website, but in others too, uh, that uh, at some point the plant, you know, as it was like... Um, uh, dry and you know rolling in the desert because it's actually a tumbleweed too it can like uh, un un uh, detach and roll uh, for x distance right uh, and then you know it ends up in a new place with water and it grows again well 
the thing is, Jesus was uh, chased or like followed by uh, this plant that you know has all this power, but resurrection with it. Um, but the problem is, the only way that Jesus could have seen Silaginella is that if he had flown uh, flown to Mexico with I don't know KLM or Delta, you know. So there is something weird. I don't know. The dude can do miracles, but I mean, something is wrong. So I'm gonna show you why this kind of stuff happened because actually there is another rose of Jericho. This plant is not the real rose of Jericho. People tend to get confused and think that Selaginella or spike moss is the true rose of Jericho because it shares uh, similar capacities with uh, the true rose of uh, Jericho, uh, Anesthetica, Yero, Chuntica. But I know they are both tumbleweeds and resurrection plants with hydro tolerance abilities, but the, this other plant, the true rose, Anesthetica Yerochuntica, is a brassicaceae, the same family of cabbage or mustard, and it comes from the Middle East and North Africa. This one actually could have uh, chased Jesus in the desert. All right, so here is a perfect example that you should always be careful with what you get from internet. Look, I googled like the name of the other rose of Jericho, the one that actually grows uh, in the Middle East, uh, Anesthetica Yerochuntica. And right away, uh, Google show you a picture of Selaginella, which is absolutely, totally different. I mean, look. All right, so let's talk about real science now, how the plant can manage to do this uh, miracle of resurrection. But first, uh, let's check what's going on uh, with the plant uh, that I put in water like uh, a few minutes ago. I mean, like 20 minutes ago. So, how we can see, well, you know, it's pretty, pretty well hydrated. The plant, you know, the plant is far bigger. It's still a bit stiff. Some green spots appeared again. So let's put it back and wait till the, till the end of the video, right? How the plant does it? Well, first, it has a chemical arsenal inside its cells. Polyols or small protectants that stabilize or prevent denaturation of proteins during dehydration. Vanillate, citronine and allantoids, antioxidant that protects against free radicals and reactive oxygen species accumulation and obviously prevents uh, cellular death. 3-3-hydroxyphenylpropionate uh, and the flavonols uh, apigenin and naringenin that protect uh, against UV. Plus a bunch of our notes coupon that we don't know what they are for, but we know that they are ab abundance, double or triple from hydrated to dry state uh, the other way around. All right, now what about the shapeshift uh, superpower? Let's see how we get this amazing uh, bio uh, biomechanical properties of Selaginia. So this here is um, a cut, a transversal cut of a stem from uh, the plant. So the abaxial side is the lower side of a stem. So the one facing uh, the ground. And the adaxial is the one facing up. And as you can see here with this the blue toluene, I think, uh, tint, uh, dye, sorry, you get like more um, uh, cells, uh, higher density of cells on the lower part of the, the, the stem. Moreover, uh, you get to see that on the same side, on the abaxial slash lower part of the plant, the stem, you have a lot more lignin as well. The lignin, which is known as, you know, this uh, biological polymer that makes that the tree's trunks are hard and make uh, the wood material hard, right? So if you have a side of the stem that is stiffer than the other one and more cells than the other one, what do you think happens when uh, it gets wet or dry? When one side is going to bend faster than, and it's going to expand and retract faster than the other one. So the side that uh, retracts faster is going to pull the one that retracts slower towards one side. So as this faster retracting side is actually the inner side, then when the plant dehydrates, where well, it bends inward towards the center of the plant, as you can see here. Pretty cool, right? 
So I know that now you're wondering, but how come they don't get entangled? Well, let me show you. Uh, it's because of the plant uh, stem arrangement or phyllotaxy. Basically, uh, the stem inside the plant uh, uh, more uh, biologically more active than the one outside, and the uh, outer stem are more lignified. I have more lignin inside, so then they're stiffer. So the thing is, when uh, at different level of hydration, the, the stems inside the plant are more bent than the, the, the stem uh, outside. So basically you have like a gradient of torsion from inside the plant towards outside. So as you can see here, you know, if you have only 10% of uh, dryness, no, technically, yeah, no, it's 10% dry, you know, you have, everything is pretty much flat, right? And when you go to 50, well, yeah, you can see that inner, inner stems are definitely uh, more wrapped up than the outer, uh, the outer stems. And then at 100, the outer stems totally cover the inner stems. It's like a, a protective shell. That's, so that's a really, really uh, uh, practical uh, adaptation in the desert because you know, your older, stiff uh, and with more, I mean, stems with more lignin that don't bother so much about the sun, I mean, don't mind so much the sun, are actually covering up the, you know, tender and fresh stems inside the, the plant, the one that, that are young and fresh and really vulnerable, vulnerable. So it's a really, really cool adaptation for desert. Think about it. All right, now you're pretty much an expert in the resurrection plant, the Selaginella. Um, let me show you what's going on with the, the, the plant now. So, yeah, it's been like, I don't know, half an hour or maybe more. And, well, you know, it's definitely flat. See, so if you remember how it was looking at the start of the video and how it's now, I mean, this is pretty a pretty fast process, right? Obviously, this one is like half dead. So what we see is actually the mechanical propriety of the tissue, and uh, the um, yeah the structural uh, part of the the stems. But when it's actually green, I mean, it's more reactive, and uh, it a lot is going a, a lot a lot of stuff are going on inside the um, the cells uh, chemically as well. All right, so now let's have a look at uh, footage and time lapses of the process, how it uh, opens up in water. So this is the footage of the first hydration I did in 2015. And as you can see, the plant back there uh, was really green, like really alive. This uh, is one month ago uh, with three different point of views because I, don't, I, love cam I like to put cameras everywhere. This is two weeks ago next to my window. And this, well, it's today. And this is the footage from the paper I used to describe the biomechanical properties. Um, the author is Ahmed Rafsanyani. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce your name right. So here you can see the movement of a single stem, which is uh, quite cool for biomechanical studies, obviously. Okay, so feel free to check the description right here. I dropped some links, uh, useful links for you if you want to know more about uh, the plant as well as all the <coughs> stuff I used during the video. I hope you learn because I definitely did be, uh, as I was preparing this video, like actually quite a lot about drought tolerance uh, systems and mechanisms and, and cellular processes. Well, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching uh, and take care and see you in the next video. Bye.